Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Try. My name is Retromation. This is Vault of the Void 1.0. It is a roguelike deck builder. In fact, probably one of the most underrated roguelike deck builders out there, in my opinion. It's so mechanically strong. We checked out a long while ago, and I've been eagerly awaiting the 1.0, which is out today. I'm checking out the beta branch, which is the effectively full version 1.0, uh, but it will be out by the time this video is out. Also, cool thing, there's a Retromation card back in this game. If you want to unlock it, if you pick up the game for yourself, you can type in Retromation right here. You get a Red Hoodie card back to use as well. But let's go on in here. We'll check out just on normal mode to kind of learn the game a bit. I am going to pick this character that I've never used before. They were introduced most recently. Uh, but let's hop on in. We get a booster pack. Let's just hop on in. I want to explain some uh, some basics here. Like, we'll just skip past this stuff so we can get in here and uh, and acquaint you with Vault of the Void. So, in we go. So, do we have this... Uh, we do have this deck manager thing. This is a kind of important thing to note about this game because it's a little bit different than other roguelike deck builders is that we do have this sort of collectible card game element as well. We can adjust our deck on the fly out of a collection that we are going to get over the course of a run. We have to have 20 cards in the deck. That is what we know. We need 20 cards in the deck, and we can modify, adjust, remove on the fly. If there's a specific fight coming up that we know our current build is going to be hard countered by, it's something you could do. You could swap. Uh, so I know we have lots of stuff we can get and do, but we are going to just move forward and get into the first combat, and then we'll do that stuff after. Uh, Matron of Memories, a place filled with whispers of the past, a blessing to start your journey. Oh, gain five souls or a random void stone. I don't remember what souls. Uh, you can gain souls mainly by fighting mobs. Uh, okay. Tradable at the Soul Collector and other various event rooms. You know, let's get, uh, let's do that. Sure. But first things first, let's go in, let's fight a, a little fight here. Potions can be equipped in either a brew or belt slot, each with different effects. Potions that are brewed have their effects played automatically at the start of combat, often lasting the whole fight. When placed on the belt, you have access to trigger its effects at any time during your turn. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about that in a moment. So for now, just jumping in. So here we go. We do have, you know, your standard mana, max energy. Uh, you have your cards that you draw every single turn. However, a couple key things of note. You do not discard your cards at the end of turn, and you will always draw back up to five. Additionally, you can hold down right-click to discard one of your cards and gain a mana back. So basically, we have really high free reign over our, uh, our attacks and abilities here. A uh, little bit less RNG focused. Like if you have, you know, if you if you ever have a, those turns in another roguelike deck builder where you start off turn one, you draw a full hand of defense cards when you wanted a full hand of attack cards, and then on turn two you draw the inverse. Uh, that doesn't happen as often in this game, and if it does, it's probably because you didn't plan ahead. So that's kind of a nice element there. Uh, but first things first, let's kind of just go in do a little bit of action here they are going to be uh, you know doing their business here but the good news in this game is damage also does not happen right away which is a, a, a simple thing that's complex to uh, to align with but it will always mean almost always mean that you will not be taking damage on turn one so they are going to inflict three threat the word threat is important instead of damage because it kind of helps to explain what's going on. Uh, next turn, this number will go up by three, you know, because he's going to do three threat and then two threat. From now on, I'll just call it damage, but you know what I mean. Um, so they're going to do five damage intended to do. They're going to intend to do five damage. We can prevent that damage next turn. So that's kind of a, a neat little thing here as well. But for now... Let us just do some simple stuff. Six damage and get 25% more damage this turn. That seems like a good call. Um, let's just start smacking somebody. We could do six damage to you. We could even get you out of the way right now. 
Uh, another interesting thing. Enemies will theoretically keep on spawning uh, until you kill a certain amount. You see right here, the battle progress went up to 50%. That means that when this goes to, to 100, enemies will stop respawning. So you can kind of hard focus things that are a little bit more of an issue to you. Like you could get a reward, you know, for killing an enemy that is maybe a little bit spookier. Oh, this has a purge effect. Purge effect zeal one. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I think it's not for right now. Uh, but there you go. You see, we already got up to 100%. That means no more enemies are going to spawn, which is really, really nice. And then here's where we'll get to see the threat. So right there, what's important to note is we did not just take three damage. We did not take three damage. We are going to take three damage if we don't do anything. So theoretically, we could just, you know, block five. It'll go down. Or we could also try and play cool and aggro and beat this fight before we take that damage. Is it possible? Yes. So we can just kill. We can just kill and then we never take that damage. And that's kind of what I like about that system is it innately lets you be a little bit more flexible, uh, rewards you being aggressive, elements like that, and it rewards you being picky with who you're going for. All right, card upgrade. You found a, an upgrade point. So we can upgrade one of our cards here for free. Uh, for the sake of clarity, we'll just go for a simple batter up. Batter up. I didn't mean that, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a look at some of the cards we got now. Now that we kind of know the basis of, of what's happening. I don't know this character. Again, this character is new, so for me. Overcharge. Overcharge 5, and then it's removed from battle, and then it has, like, exhaust. Okay. Increases your maximum energy by 1 per stack, and increases... And you get an extra energy at the start of your turn as well, and then reduce your overcharge by 1. Oh, Wait, so if I did this, we would get five extra energy next turn? And then the turn after that, we would get four? That's pretty darn good for three. For the cost of three, it's pretty darn good. Let's remove one of those. Pop that bad boy in there. Um, okay. Deal damage equal to half the target's shock to other enemies. I don't know if we really have shock right now. I don't, I don't think we really do. 16 damage overcharge two. That's the, I mean, that's very expensive, but theoretically we're going to be having lots of energy. Block equal to your current energy. Delay rage. Oh, so we, we would get rage the next turn. I'll tell you what, let's remove a defensive card and we'll slap in that. Block equal to your current zeal. You get zeal for every energy you spend. These are like the mechanics that are kind of unique to this character. Uh, gain a zeal for every energy you spend, triggering zeal powers at certain levels. Resets at the end of turn. Okay. Set zeal to zero fresh powers. Every turn that is even, overcharge one. Every turn that is odd. Get rage 25. Wait, this is just a buff? This just lasts forever? That lasts for the entire battle. I'll just tell, I'll tell you what, sure. And I'll say one less defend. Okay. Similarly, you may notice that we have these uh, this little gem over here. These are kind of little, you know, buff gems that we can slot into cards to make them a little bit better, a little bit different, yada yada. Uh, this one is block four. So whatever, ge like, uh, whatever we slot the gem into, we will gain an additional four block on top of whatever it already does. I kind of like the idea of slapping it into a an attack. Here's the, I'll be honest, I'm more likely to keep this than I'm likely to keep these other ones, so let's just say that for now. Okay. I don't know what the spellbook's about. Ah, yeah. We have a we have a character spell. Um, Zeal will cross that bridge when we come to it. it is, uh, that is unique to the character. So we can plan out our path here. You can see wherever we move, it's going to remove some of these other tiles so we're trying to figure out how to chart our way through um hmm. an upgrade and a potion what's in the chest a choice of cards some essence souls and an upgrade point seems really good 
also, it's just for free. As you enter, cards zoom past, whistling by your ear and stopping and presenting themselves before you. Each begging to be picked. Block eight. Okay, so this costs zero. Block eight, the next card played will cost one more. Oh my. Deal 20 damage. If you kill an enemy with this, draw two. There's shock. An enemy shock will be added on to an attack's attack card's damage. And then shock is reduced by half. Uh, so if we attack them and they had two shock. For if we attack them for 10 and they have two shock, that attack would instead do 12 damage. And then the shock would go down to one. If if it was 10 and 10, it'd be 20, and then the shock would go down to five. Uh I mean it seems neat. We don't really have a shock run going, but I'm fine with taking it for now. Free upgrade. Delay Rage Overcharge. So Overcharge kind of makes it pay for itself just in the future. Rigged. Start with this card. Oh, what about that buff? On even Overcharge for two. You know what? Let's do, let's do the buff. Sounds fun. All right, up we go. Uh, an aggressive fight. Creatures can both stack poison and increase their own frenzy. So frenzy is just how many times they attack. You can get Duff to withstand their attacks for long. Brew triggers automatically at the start of combat. Belt, you'll have to trigger it during battle. Okay, I mean, that's really nice. I would rather have it on the belt. I don't really need to heal immediately at the start of battle. That seems stupid. Uh, okay, zeal powers. Let's check this out now, finally. This is kind of, like, unique to our character. Here you can exchange fervor for new zeal powers. You'll start each run with zeal 3 and zeal 7 power. However, you'll need to purchase your zeal 5 and 10 powers. Each slot can only have one power. Gotcha. So this is what it was talking about in uh, in combat. This is why... Okay, so this is why I did three damage to everybody. Because I reached zeal level three. Gotcha. I reached zeal level three by spending that mana. Zeal seven, gain an energy. Okay. This is really nice, too. It gives you this extra information. Like, this is how often you'll reach this. This is how often you've reached that. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so here's the zeal. Gain a zeal for every energy spent, triggering zeal powers at certain levels. Resets at the end of each turn. So basically, we're trying to charge up like mad there uh, our, uh, our ability. But we could also, like, you know, purge things by holding down right click. That also helps. And this, if we purge it, we gain a zeal. Wow, okay. So there's a lot, there's a lot going on with that. At the start of the turn, the enemy will consume the leftmost Gloom Shroom, increasing its frenzy by one. That will not increase the battle progress bar. So can I do 14? I feel like I can do 14. Deal six damage X times. So we can do eight. So 11 damage X times. So this is what we could do, though. See what I'm saying? We could... Get rid of that. Get rid of that. We got three energy. Now this is played three times for 33 damage. Bada bing, bada boom. We killed two sons of guns before we did anything. We spent one more energy. We would have got one for free. So the zeal does reset though. When you start a turn. Oh, this is our relic. Our starting relic. Cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, we get two energy back a turn, and we will always drop to five. So that's kind of why it's like you can hold on to cards. It is optimal to um, get rid of all your cards in the event that you're confident you'll want to play all of your cards. Um, overcharge five. I feel like at this point, this is a long-term play. We don't need that. I, I'm gonna. I'm pretty confident. I just will not need that. Got poison. Suffer threat equal to poison at the start of your turn. Reduces by one at the end of your turn. I mean, I actually, like, I just can't kill. I don't think. Seven, and this does three. Yeah, I can't. Unless this applies immediately. I don't think so. 
Nope. Alright. Well, we'll just block. Do this. Get you down to, down to 1 HP. Works for me. Poison spores? What's that? Applies poison one. Okay, that's just... That's your intent. Gotcha. God, look at this freaking red hoodie. It's so fun. What a fun idea. Get out of here. Get out of here, punk. We get a, uh, an essence bonus for a perfect fight there. So we just got... Apply weak two to all enemies. I could... I feel like that's not... I feel like I'm not interested in these right now. Rolling Thunder is interesting, though. Overcharge for X. Like, so for every mana we spend, we get overcharge for next turn. It's not bad. It's really not bad. Because it spends the mana, giving us zeal. And it puts the mana on next turn. So it's like a really good thing to play last when I don't have anything else to play. Like, it's a really good thing. Really cost-effective way to uh, to get that going. That being said, I don't know if it's worth slotting in or not right now. But I, you know what? Let's science it out. This is the fun thing about this game, having the, the kind of collectible card game system, it, is that you don't have to just... Uh, okay, this... Put this on... Uh, what's a weighted assault? Which one's this? I feel like that's not going to uh, activate the block that many times. I don't think so. Maybe it does. Hello, merchant. Apply slow delay rage. I'm assuming delay rage means get that rage next turn. So 50% damage increase on the next turn. Gain an energy, one energy every even turn, plus one max energy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Overcharge three, your next card cost plus two. Purge, so if we discard this, gain one energy. Uh, I will say the font is slightly off the card because I have the ex an experimental big text mode on because the last time I played this, one of my concerns was that the font was kind of really small. It was hard to read everything that's going on. Uh, so this is going to be helpful. I think we just say no for now. I'm not confident in uh, what I'm building yet. Heretic Sight. Clear this combat to earn yourself fervor to spend on new zeal abilities. So that's for, our, for this character here. Gotcha. So this is a starting power. We could unlock... Sacred Rays. At Zeal 5, deal 6 damage to all enemies. That seems great. That seems like a really good thing to do. Augment Armament? You could... Wait, I could turn this into... Whenever I cast 3 mana's worth of spells on a turn, I upgrade a card in my deck permanently? That seems a little nuts. Maybe I'll go for that. Either way, I think we do go for this. Uh, new spells to cast. I have not cast my spell a single time, because we've just been, um... Honestly, we've kind of been destroying everything. So it hasn't been relevant. And also, I... And I know how ironic this is, because I guarantee I have information overloaded you. I'm trying not to information overload you. There's a lot that's going on, and that's kind of what I enjoy about this game, but it also is what makes it difficult to, uh, to get your foot in the door to. But I promise you, like, it's one of those ones where when you do cross that barrier, it's really special. Um, we have a character spell. I know I haven't been using it, and it's been on purpose. Deal X damage and block X equal to your zeal. Uh, so we get this every four turns. Uh, we can use it kind of like a hero power in a, in a card game or something. This enemy does two damage to threat whenever uh, it is the target of an attack card. When this enemy is destroyed, all other enemies suffer week three. I think we'll probably go for that. Whimper. Oh, no. Oh. I can pet. I can pet. Good. Inflict two Banes. You can turn off the card, Bob, too, by the way. I just kind of like it. 
Um, step one, I'm gonna put on the buff. I think that I think that will be nice. Go for a couple purges. We could do the seal, get the AOE. I do want to try and get this punk out of the way. We'll definitely do that. Zeal six. See, we would have done six damage in an AOE, which would have been really, really nice. I'm going to save this. Like, I could do six damage, but I would rather do six damage and get six block where it counts. Because we got a lot of damage coming in right here. It's 12. 12 damage. We're going to be way more interested in... Um... Oh, God. Okay. Um, Do we do this? How long is this fight going to go on? That That's, I guess, probably the big question. This is going to be good for boss fights. I will definitely play that, and I'll probably play it first. Okay, so we're at 8. We're not even going to block all unless we do our, uh, our overcharge. So, zeal 7, if we play 7. 8 damage X times... that rage increase instead so we can kill that but killing will not remove the threat that's an important element of this game as well killing an enemy does not remove its threat only beating the fight removes its threat that's kind of the drawback that's kind of the drawback of the system that you do have to deal with is it is delayed but you're going to have to deal with it but it also helps with balance because you know like it's a lot easier to work with that then uh, from a balanced perspective. Oh, boy. I think... We do this. We're at... Oh, God. Well, if I attack you, you will be weakened. Which is nice. I think we do ditch that. Go for this. Five damage, five block. Okay, so here's the thing. You're going to add two damage, but that's okay because it should, it would add two, make it five, and we block the five. That works for me. So we used our ability. Congratulations. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray. We did it. All right, so they've been weakened. So here's the thing. We got that fool out of the way. They had, they were worth 100% progress. Uh, the scarier the enemy, the more battle progress they are worth. So since we, we attacked a big boy, we got a lot of action done there. Alright, we're taking three. I kind of want to... Um, make sure that I... Kill in one here. Good. Alright, we're good. Heresy sight cleared! So we got uh, one of the fervor. All right, what do we want to get? I'm not going to go for Zeal 10. I don't think I've ever reached Zeal 10. I've never reached Zeal 7 even, so I, I feel like going for Zeal 7 seems stupid right now. I, getting, gaining a whole new ability for 5 seems pretty good when we reach it 63% of the time. I will admit that this is so tempting, though. Let's get the 6 damage... Six damage to all whenever we hit uh, that level. Okay, so we can um, we can go here, fight... Or not fight an elite. Uh, that's an elite. Some items are tainted with the Void's Dark Essence, although they come with benefits. Others carry misfortunes. We could get, like, a cursed situation going on. We can move up there, though. What did we gain? Exhilaration. Overcharge one. If your zeal is five or above, rebound meaning that we get to play it again. Um. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's a bit gimmicky. And not fully reliable. Because we need to draw it, and we need to draw it and be able to get Zeal 5 with four cards, which is less likely, not unlikely, but less likely. 
I'm gonna say no for now, but the fun thing is it's no no commitment. We're not just never gonna use it. We can't get a different spell, can we? Nope. I'm not never doing it. Alright, what the hell is your deal? Every time your deck is reshuffled, this enemy gains an attack power. So it does two damage three times at a, at a base. Oh my god, you got a lot of stuff. Apply vulnerable two if you have a Bane in your hand. Um, yikes. We're going to definitely just purge both of those. Go for the damage increase. Smack, smack. Next turn's going to be nice. Do I do the 7 damage now? No, right? No, I want to save it for when we're going to um, also gain defense out of the mix. Alright, what do we have going on here? Suffer threat equal to burning at the start of your turn. Okay, so you did that instead of attack. That's fine by me. Okay. Go for the overcharge. I kind of want to save this card. Rolling Thunder sounds fun too. Eh. How much energy? Okay, we're, we're gaining... Overcharge plus six, Stormbrand plus one. So, how much are we getting? We're going to get two, two, eight, nine. Are we getting nine? Are we getting nine? Let's find out. We definitely did not. Okay. Oh, wait. Sorry, that was max energy. I, I, I read the max energy wrong. Choose a card to discard. Oh, we don't need this many of those. So shock doesn't scale off of um, damage. So here's the thing. Purge, purge. This will cast eight times. We will gain an extra energy. Which will let us use batter last. Which feels weird because it's kind of to gain stuff. But like... So that's 16. So that will be added onto this. For 22 damage. Bonk. Yeah, I'm thinking that we should probably tap out when that is going to do 11 damage. This is a much trickier enemy than the others so far. Okay, so we got six here. Block equal to your current energy, which would be three. It would it would be three. Not very good. Hmm. I guess we're going to hope for the future. It's not great, though, because we're going to shuffle our deck this turn, which means that their power will go up. They haven't been doing lots of, like, attack attacks, though. They are, they are now, of course, but... So what was this something about... Uh... Purging cards reduces burning by one. Hmm. So we could do this. We would gain an energy. We could purge the other batter. We could purge the other batter that way. And then we could thwart thwart. Just ramp up for later. Like, you're going to have all kinds of shock. I mean, that is nice. Did a little bit of damage. Look at all, look at all that max energy. 
We ra we ramp up like a son of a gun. Okay. 11 damage coming in here. Not my favorite. Uh, so we could do extra damage for sure, though. 32. Can we do this? 25. I think we have this. We don't have this. Rip. We can get rid of that. Go for this. The AoE from the 6th of the 7th Zeal. We did it. I actually did it. Never mind. I forgot. Okay. So that was a risky fight, but it was worth it. Deal 8 damage. Apply shock 2. Discharge 1. What is discharge? Consume an overcharge to gain an energy. Okay. Neat. Neat, 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 neat. Okay, so... I have reached Zeal 10 now once. Zeal 7 I reached a couple times. It makes sense, though, because we used that 3 mana card that like gave us that huge overcharge buff. So that makes sense, obviously. Upgrade 2 cards from your deck. I feel like... Upgrading a card from our deck every single time we hit three energy seems so good. And then the fun thing is we can pivot out of it later. Can we... Oh, look at that. You can change your spells at any time, too, for it. Very interesting. Block six times... Or block six X times. I'll admit, I kind of am liking Smite. Draw one, discard one when we play this card. Hmm. I feel like it's good on something like... I feel like that's good on Batter. Because if we're doing that, we're aggro and we're probably trying to get another aggro card. I would assume, usually. Smite, let's ditch a batter for another smite. I do like that. I've not I've not taken damage yet, so I'm uh <laughs> I'm feeling good about that. I will. Uh, a reminder also, like if I since I didn't mention it, I'm playing on normal mode. There's normal or there's e easy, I think. I think there's easy. Easy, normal, hard impossible impossible plus so like do not be worried about it being too easy this is also the first act of uh of multiple i can't remember how many so there's a lot of flexibility with how to make the game more difficult for yourself as well if you want so what do you do gains a frenzy the first time it suffers any debuff or when an enemy is killed interesting so maybe i don't want to well the good news is i don't actually apply that much of a that much debuff. Uh, so here's the thing. We could, um, if we, no, if we cancel it, cancel it, we would go up to six. That would not give us the extra energy back. So I was going to say we could stack all the Rolling Thunder and then get it with a smack after. It's a little overkill. Let's set up 60. Apply Vulnerable and a Stun. What does Stun do? You lose energy equal to your Stun. That's pretty bad for us. All right. Choose a card in your deck to up... We get to pick... Do we want this to be rigged? Yes. Because getting that on first turn in this game is really, really nice. I'm not going to do that. Um, because since... We kind of need to get a kill this turn, I think. The good news is... Oh, shoot. That's right. Oh, it's only up to 60%. The good news is we probably can. The bad news is I don't think actually don't think we can anymore. All right, this is going to be painful. And 
we no longer can kill you with the single... Oh, God. All right. Well, we're definitely doing this. Okay, we're going to be taking a smack in here. Yep, 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 yep. Get the extra zeal. We're going to block at least four. So we're taking our first hit here. Makes sense. Makes sense. I I had not fully considered the fact that the uh, the middle was going to also go... Oh, no. We're going to have to pretty much just go defensive here, I think. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Incoming large pain. Blood in the water. Heal for 25. Thank you for doing that. Very least, though. It's not that bad right now. Getting this this late is not what we really want. This is huge for us right now. That's like... Yeah, that's, that's huge. That being said... It's not going to save us right now. Not going to save us at the moment. Block 8. I will just do that right now. I think we get rid of that. The fight's not going on too much longer. Um, awkward. That is awkward. It gives us block as well. Tell you what, I'm going to trash that for sure. 16 is what that'll do. You know what? I mean, at this point, I don't care about the one damage. So we have seven. This is 32, but it's not going to do 32. It's going to do 16 the next time we do it. Um... Two, four. We will go up to five, so we're going to do six damage to everybody, actually, now that I think about it. So that helps. You start a turn at five plus overcharge gain in energy. All right, well, we should be good now. Man, we're okay. We get to upgrade like freaking crazy, man. Should have done that in a slightly different order, but it doesn't really matter. Ah, uh, an upgrade? Another one? Oh, it's only for combat. I gotcha. It's still good. Still good. Still very, very good. Um. Apply vulnerable to the highest HP target. Ooh. Which is takes 50% more damage. Zeal 7. So what is that again? Gain in energy. I do like it. 75% rage. So here's the thing. If you spend 7 mana, when do you gain the rage? If I spend a 7 mana spell, do I get the rage right away? I think you might. Should we do? Let's find out. Kicks and Wiggles. Because that could be really good with that X cost card. Overcharge 1. Really nice. Is there anything that, we cast, uh, that we're going to be casting often? I mean, this... Let's do it. 
I don't think that it I don't think it means that we're gonna get overcharged for every time we cast it. Like I think it's good, but I don't think we're gonna I don't think it's that good, you know? Uh deal seventeen damage to all enemies. Your next card costs plus two. No, not right now. Forked Thrust does seem pretty good now. If we're gonna be having the other uh the other buff. Sure. Soul Collector. Uh, artifacts and Void Stones available to those to purchase with your collected souls. Or, you know what? Sure. I just want to see this. Get a uh, a potential passive. We have we have eighteen random rare artifact. Rare, class-specific. Unlock all zeal powers at the start of every turn, zeal 2. I mean, that's pretty cool. So, zeal powers were the things where it's like whenever we hit 3, 5, 7 zeal, they, it does an ability. Get 2 zeal at the start of every turn. The first time every turn you draw an affliction, get 5 block. If you apply slow... Out of these, I, I guess I will go for that, yeah. The fact that we can just auto-unlock these is pretty cool. Add two random upgraded volatile common cards to your hand. The next play card will cost one less. Apply slow to all enemies, reducing their frenzy by one to a minimum of one. Block three. Sure, we'll do that for now. Recur a random heavy card. I don't know if I have a heavy card right now. Draw one, discharge one. Gain an energy. Eh. Upgrade two cards from your deck temporarily. I'm actually pretty satisfied with what we've got for now. Apply shock four to all enemies. I'd probably pivot into this. There's some situations where you don't want them to have the status effects that we we have definitely already found. Uh, same spell, yeah. Interweaves fortitude and AP gain with attacks constantly escalating its threat while you wait for an opening. Ooh, boy. Ignores the first instance of damage or debuff applied every turn. Look at that big buff for now, though. This is really. Let's um, let's stockpile up for the next turn. We can probably go pretty wild. Ooh boy! Draw and discard one. Block equal to your current energy. I mean, we probably should do that, right? At the very least. Bare minimum. All right. Draw with this card one. We actually don't need these. Okay. Again, like, I just feel like I really should only use that when I need it, right? Oh, boy. Oh, my God. You are terrifying. first instance of damage will be blocked. I mean, it should be pretty good for Smite, I suppose. Hmm. This is a five. It's not amazing. That was a pretty good... That was a pretty good turn there. That was a pretty good turn, actually. And then we got the 9 damage, 9 block. All right, come on. Come on, baby. You got 15 freaking fortitude. All right. Buff up what? At this point, sure. 
An 11 block. We, we can block all of it. If we, um... Well, we might as well just say no to that at this point. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Which is not really how you want to do this fight. God, stop doing the defensive. You jerk. Okay. I'd rather have the zeal right now. Let's see if we can get another buff. Fortitude broken. It took quite a while. We got an extra energy, but hey, that's for next turn. Another defensive attack. Oh, boy. Okay, we got smite. We actually, we should be able to win. Okay, do we? Absolutely. Hell, we could, uh... We could giga win. Get destroyed. Deal five damage and block four X times. That seems really good. That seems really good. Is that like a rare card? It's got three stars in the bottom left. I think it is. I think that's something we would really enjoy having. Questionable sell gentlemen selling artifacts or essence. An elite. Two souls and a choice of an elite artifact. If we go the other way, we can't go for it. I want to see what it's like. Oh, it's Bruce. It's Bruce. Starts out simple. Quickly overwhelm you with a combination of boosted frenzy and summoned allies. Um, I guess we could think of our zeal. Like, what would we want for, for this specific fight? Summon ghost piranhas as an ally. So, like, maybe we would rather have even more AoE. Where was the thing that um, added vulnerable to the highest HP? Th that's this one? Yeah, kind of like that mixed with some AoE for this. I don't know, I'm just thinking, like, to get rid of the freaking piranhas. Shock 4 to all enemies is kind of nice, too. I actually think that'll be better. Alright. Three discarded items lay before... Oh, we get one beforehand! Every seventh card played will cost one less energy. Every time you block, block one. Every time you delay block, delay block one. This does not trigger itself. Uh, every time we block, so the X cost block card would get plus one to everything. I don't know how many heavy cards I have. I don't think I really have a whole lot. I have, this is a heavy card. Okay, so I do have heavy cards. I do. Every third heavy card played will cost minus three. The first time each battle you play a heavy card, upgrade and add a red void stone to it. I don't remember what that is. Can you... Okay, is this like Monster Train rules where we can get X minus 3 and it actually plays... It, it, like, it's actually value? It's a really big... Oh, that's a really big... Thing. Let me check. I don't know. <laughs> I actually I tried to try to search it up. Couldn't figure it out. Every seventh card played would cost one less energy. Sometimes we want to... You know, we want it to cost energy. This is like the most standard, useful, nice... I like it thing. Uh, womp, womp. Just get lots of energy for next turn to go wild. 
Okay, so no ghostly piranhas were summoned. Okay, so we can do that and weaken you while also gaining a good chunk of this, which is nice because we can go all out now and do 131 damage. And we don't even... Wait. Oh. And I don't even need to use my ability to do the 13. But I feel like maybe I just should. Like, I feel like... I know we overflowed it by a lot. But, uh, dang. So, yeah. The, um... The 7 mana thing, that must apply, right? Jesus. Jesus. This is silly. I kind of want to, uh, for the sake of the video, because we're probably going to wrap it up after this, just this first floor here. This is kind of, this was, uh, if I ever had an issue with Vault of the Void, it was always this. It's that runs are crazy long. That's really nice for some people and really rough for others. Um... You will get attached to your deck. You'll be able to do a lot of stuff uh, with it. But dang, it, it is a long thing. This is floor one of three. Okay, rage, extra rage, extra rage. Let's just put that on a batter. Well, right? Should I? Is there anything else I... You know what? I'm going to keep more thwarts. Like, I'm going to probably want to remove some batters, and I don't think I'll want to remove batters that I've, like, you know, gemmed up or anything. But yeah, let's just move towards the boss. Draw and zeal. Draw and zeal equal to this card's cost. Huh. Grow stronger for every four cards you play in a turn and has the ability to expel your cards. Interesting. Tell you what. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save that for the next time. You're not doing anything, huh? So did you weaken before or after? Like, that really is the big question. I have faith that with that 12 damage, we should be able to get a one... Sh uh, not a one shot. We should be able to get a kill this turn. I feel it. We got no X cost, but that's fine. 13. 21. All right, we're good. We're good. We're, at, we're, we're destroying. We've got some pretty nutty stuff. I feel like smite. Just keep up. Just keep upgrading smite, right? Right. Contraposition. Go ham. Lose the defense. Go for it. We're gonna fight the boss. I should we? Is this a smart idea to skip fights? No. Should you do that when you're playing? If you just want to win? No. Do I want to do it to make? You know, us ha be able to actually end the video on, like, a climactic boss fight. Yes, I do. Uh, this creature will inflict banes and deal damage based on cards drawn. When its minions spawn, their AP is based off of the current turn. Ooh. So the crows actually have 5% battle progress. So you could kill 20 crows, and then crows would stop spawning. <laughs> If you like have a build that for some reason you just can't kill the priest, you could kill 20 crows. You you can't can't win like based off of that, but then the crow wouldn't keep spawning. Either way, so we're starting with 5 damage. Why are we starting with 5 threat? Whenever you draw a card that isn't an infliction, suffer a threat. Gotcha.
Um, sure. So we'll only get four threat now. So there's a little bit more of a reason to just hold on to our stuff now. A little bit, a little bit. Okay. Choose a card to discard. Oh no, that's actually gonna be bad. We gain a threat when that happens. Okay. Not bad. We're, we're like halfway ish done with them already, though. We should probably get the congregation out of the way. What's our zeal power that does it? AoE? That's level five. It's not even going get to get a kill, though. Okay, so if we kill you, we, we win, though. Oh my god, we actually might be able to do it. No to that. 60. Mm -hmm. Jeez! And that's an extreme amount of block. We've got a stupid build going here, gang. We've got a very dumb build. If I could walk, I'd kick your... We'll do nothing. Alright, so about that climactic ending... Apparently those, like, couple bugs that did five damage to me were the, uh, the trickiest thing. New spell learned. Let's pray. Uh, the Well of Stars. You stare deep into an abyss that haunts the bottom of the well. Motes of light glimmer and twinkle submerge inside of the murky depths. Haunted visages of forgotten promises. Choose a free promise. Receive a booster pack with a guaranteed rare. Two random void stones, two upgrade points. Or we can spend money to get uh, something extra. Oh, oh, this is... Yeah, so we can, we get this for sure, and then we can also buy these upgrades. I gotcha. Interesting. Rolling Thunder, we haven't been using as much. I feel like we're probably keeping these, right? Either way. Very fun, very cool. All right. So, yeah, that was, you know, that was the first floor here of Vault of the Void. Uh, there are four different characters that are all, like, are all completely different. They have four characters with two unique uh, starting sets, and those sets have different cards, different abilities, different spells. Uh, so they're kind of going for multiple different archetypes of the same kind of character that you can start out with. There's that, there's the dailies, all that stuff. In fact, we can just go like this here. Uh, oh, oh shoot. We can't, uh, I can't show it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, there's just, there's the four characters. They're all, yeah, very, very different in how they play. Uh, again, there's a lot going on in this game, but it's, again, if you are willing to get in, uh, and kind of get over that little hump, it's not actually that bad. Uh, there's lots of keywords that have a lot to, uh, explain and, like, it very in-depth, but they're really not too bad, especially if you are a veteran of the roguelike deck builder, uh, genre, and you are looking to graduate to the next level of, like, difficulty and complex like complex mechanics vault of the void is where you should go so if you're like i like roguelike deck builders but i i want to be challenged more i want more flexibility and you know the the realm of which like how much you can break this game is really really like huge you can break this game to smithereens if you have a deep and intricate understanding of the systems at play and what your character can do, and everything like that. You saw we we decimated that run. Obviously, it was on normal mode. It was not the full run. That was just zone one. 
There's the three bosses, and then I believe a final boss after that uh, in like a very, very short fourth zone, if I remember. I can't, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, just a very solid, very solid roguelike deck builder. Again, wildly underrated. I, I really am so glad that 1.0 is out, I've, that I've got this opportunity to make another video with like a, you know, a logical kind of time to jump in and for you guys to jump in. So please do check out the game with the link at the top of the description if you are interested in it. And again, consider using, uh, you know, using code Retromation. It doesn't, you know, again, I say that like it makes it sound like I, I'm sponsored or I get money from it. I don't. But consider if you're if you're playing pop in the retromation code it's literally just enter code retromation you can use the retromation red hoodie which is so fun god i love it uh alas alas though that is that that is going to do it here for today if you're interested in roguelike deck builders if you like the roguelike genre in general this is a channel that you should be subscribed to so consider doing so leave a like and a, a comment down below if you enjoyed the video if you liked the game and if you want to see more of it let me know. Maybe we can make something happen, Cap'n. Uh, I really enjoy this game. So, thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you. Check out the channel for Rogue Lee some more every single day, and I will see you next time. Bye!